So let me just um, ask everyone uh, by a show of hands, has anyone taken a look at the website and taken a look at that uh, large project edition that we've put on to it? Oh, sorry. Anyone else? <laughs> 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 what website? Yeah. There is a, which website, which project? Yeah. Which website? Nura.org. <laughs> okay. All right. And we are at the Nura meeting. Um, it's a flip there because you know, it's our website. Our website, our discussion on large projects. Oh, I see. So, and on the agenda, in, sorry, in the um, PDF version that was sent out by the secretary, myself, um, there's a link at the bottom of the agenda on the first page that goes directly to the site that we're discussing. Okay. It, it will be helpful for um, you know to, for the discussion, uh, and it will be helpful if after the discussion we go home, you just go to the newer website. For those of you who haven't been to the newer website for a while, also some cool stuff. David Marks is pub public. Oh, the city hall still has an update to the data feed on that, so it's a lot. Of, it shows no crime at all, which I'm sure, that. I'm sure that's what what Marty Walsh wants us to see. Um, so, um, uh, anyhow, uh, we have recently added to the newer website um, a, um, uh, a section on those larger BRA projects that are uh, affecting our neighborhood. This was sort of an outcropping of the fact that you know we as a group had a, had a vote. We had a position on that we weren't opposed. We were opposed to extending the urban renewal zone timing. It was extended by less time, six years rather than ten years, less time than than, than the BRA had asked for. So that's a, a little win. And there are some other restrictions that have been put on those urban renewal zones, which is nice. Um, but because of the learning that we did, you know, a lot of people came up to me and said, "How does this really affect us?" And the biggest way that the BRA urban renewal zone and just the BRA affects you is because there are projects along North Washington Street in the Bullfish Triangle, at Government Center, North, at, at, you know, the, the North Station, and of course uh, the waterfront project, Lewis Wharf. Um, there's more activity, um, rumors about Sergeant's Wharf, uh, which is one of the sites that's designated for development uh, uh, by the BRA, and we can discuss uh, that. There's the Jafaro building, which is a little bit south of us, but it's going to be a grave consequence to anyone living in Carver Towers, as was mentioned before. Uh, and, uh, and there are other things like Parcel 9, and uh, potentially uh, the parcel that's right next to the North Bend Street School, that could be developed, and as po it's possible that something taller could go there as well. Um, you know, it's 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 surprising where you can build tall things these days, as evidenced by 88 North Washington Street, which is a it's a postage stamp plot of about 1,400 square feet. It's not the size of this room. Yeah, and they're putting like a 22-story building up there. Um, so the 16-story, 16-story building. Up there. But I mean, it's uh, you know, it's there's 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 altitude all around us. Um, we as a neighborhood have been fairly lucky because inside our our boundaries there have been very few you know high-rise projects. None really. There was a, an attempt to do one at 585. Uh, Commercial Street and Nura and others um, pushed back on that and we were able to uh, find this great um, outcome where the Elliott um, School um, took over the building. Um, but, um, but just on our board, there's a lot of stuff going on. So that's what we're identifying. And also inside our, our I guess you could call it on our border too, on the water border, we have um, we have Lewis Wharf, you know, which is right now in uh, the BRA Art Lady process in the middle of it, I guess. And we have um, we have the um, the Sergeant's Wharf uh, potential. We also had a development at uh, Battery Wharf too, which was which was a BRA project, but fortunately it was limited to 55 feet. So these are these are the reasons that we think it's it's important to have a discussion. I just wanted to find out how many people uh, you know were aware of the web page. Yeah. How many people are, are aware of those projects, uh, that any of the projects that I've mentioned? And how many folks are concerned about the projects? Okay, <laughs> good, good, good. Then I don't feel as if I'm talking to myself, which I have to say sometimes. Uh, and not just here, by the way. Uh, but, um, that does happen. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So what, what I want to do is I want to give a, a um, I want to have a, a little bit of time to have an update on a couple of the projects. Um, we have two IAG members here who can speak, Lewis Wharf and Parcel 9 to the project, to just talk about what the process has been like. I'm going to ask them to each do a sub five minute um, readout, uh, starting with Jennifer for Lewis Wharf, and then we're going to do some concluding remarks. Hi everyone, I'm Jen Crampton. Um, aside from being secretary here, um, I'm on the IAG for Lewis Wharf. Um, so Ford just asked us to give a little overview of what has happened in that process so far and how, how we feel it's going and how we feel our input has been taken. Um, the IAG for Lewis Wharf was formed in the summer of 2015 um, with meetings beginning in August. Uh, there were three IAG meetings <coughs> Um, that ended up including a lot of community members. I see a lot of your faces in the audience that showed up, so that's great. Um, at the IAG meetings, the IAG members had the first crack at asking questions and making comments, but then it was opened up to the public um, time permitting. Um, there was a scoping session at City Hall where other city agencies heard the presentation from the developer and were able to ask questions. I attended that along with a couple other IAG members. Um, that wasn't a huge meeting um, pub publicly, but we did attend that. And then um, there was one public meeting that I think a lot of people here will remember um, in the last October that was very hotly contested, attended, picketed, all that good stuff. So um, following that 30-day public comment process, um, which is where I'll kind of get into where it is in the Article 80 process and what we see the next steps as, um, on the newer website, you'll see a graphic of what the Article 80 process entails, and it's kind of like a Gantt chart type thing where it, it kind of lays it out. So we're in the Article 80 review process. Um, so basically, uh, last September, a um, project notification form was filed by the developer that started the clock on the 30-day public comment period, which I referenced. You know, we had all those meetings and the, the big public meeting on October 2nd. The um, public comment process closed on October 15th, and by the end of October, on October 30th, um, the BRA issued what's called a scoping determination, which basically responds to, tries to wrap up all the comments and concerns that people have, and kind of sets out an outline of what the developer needs to present in their draft project impact report, which is the document that we've all been waiting for. Um, when that draft project impact report is issued, uh, there'll be a 75-day public comment period where um, everyone can, you know, give their input, good, bad, indifferent, whatever, um, about the project. There'll be a lot of meetings again, so keep your ears open for that. We'll, of course, keep everybody informed. Uh, but when that 75-day public comment period opens, it'll be important for everyone to engage during that time. Um, there's a similar process going on at the state level. Um, MEPA has a process and there's been some letters written by um, various agencies including um, the governor's environmental secretary um, and then there's also uh, this is kind of a side thing but there was a there's a determination pending on the buildability of the pile field so there was a survey done of the pile field looking at how much of it is actually buildable because um, it wasn't maintained over time and it may not indeed be buildable um, in its full extent. So we're waiting for that determination as well. David, you might know better what the technicalities are of that. <laughs> but um, Okay, so um, anyways, the BRA has said to me in a direct email um, when I've asked them for status updates that when the draft project impact report is issued, they will re-engage with the IAG and with the public for that 75 day comment period. Do we have any idea that they, they haven't given us any? No. Time There's comment. been, in various news articles, there was talk of it being as soon as March, which is clearly passed. And then in another article, I believe it was a banker and tradesman that I was holding up last time I talked here, they said August. So, who knows? Yeah. Um, and then the last question you asked um, us to address is whether we think that the IAG is having an impact. My initial response was, hmm, dot, dot, dot. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, everyone acts like they're listening. We got to comment publicly. We all expressed our opinions for and against. And I'm not really sure where those comments go and how much weight they have, but we got to make them. So I feel like it was worth something. And it's always useful if you're asked to be on an IAG to do it. 
Um, sometimes you might think you're talking into the wind, um, and, um, and I'm, I can understand it. We won't have time to do parcel nine just because it's uh, we're almost. Uh, uh, can we'll I say one thing? thing? Well, can I can I ask you the one question? Do you think you're being listened to on your IHR? Um, I'd rather not answer that because I'd rather <laughs> say that the comment period ends on the 19th of May. Oh, okay. 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 This, right. is, this is parcel nine. Uh, parcel nine. Hotel, yes. Right? yes. Cool. And that's on the website as well. Okay. Good. Cool. So, yeah. Frank was also on the IAG. Oh, great. Fantastic. So, great job to, to summarizing. And I was also, and I didn't anticipate so much on the Boston and the Island one because I think the adjustment position between the two is the guy one was just rushed for and everything we that. And, and it was the end of the former man's term. And it was a process that really, to me, I felt like I was wasting my time. You know, it's almost me. Where I think the community involvement with the law was much more important than anything. Um, not only maybe the IAG process more important more prominent, but I think the city is paying attention to it more. There were multiple IAGs. I had a withdraw from the Parcel 9. I don't even know I was on it, actually. But it's been so much so the city doesn't let you know. Um, but I, I think the Lewis Law Office, because it's so contentious, is working much better. And that, that's good to hear. I, I know uh, w w I'll just make some closing comments, because we're going to have to clear the room. But the um, so there have been some real problems and uh, per perception problems, as, uh, like you just mentioned, Jason, as well as real problems with the Article 80 back and forth. Many people have thought it's more a communication mechanism, and maybe the, you're talking, you are talking to the wind sometimes, but sometimes not. Now the things that we have hoped for, um, that, you know, city councilors can actually request a, a city council hearing if it gets uh, too contentious. I know Sal has said he's going to help do that on uh, Lewis Wharf. If, uh, if it was necessary, if anything was, to, was attempted to be rushed through. Nonetheless, um, Brian Golden, in the recent budget hearing for the DRA, resisted J uh, Michelle Wu's um, and you know entreaty to let's do some real reform to mm -hmm. Article 80. And he was really pushing back on on the reform, saying it's already been reformed, which it hasn't. Oh. Um, until we hear it's reformed, I think the neighborhood associations of ATCO, ours as as one of them. I really feel like we need to have a voice. So we're going to figure out over the next uh, uh, couple of weeks how to have a voice on those projects, which the city doesn't officially recognize neighborhood groups on BRA projects because there's the BRA or IAG purview, but we're still going to figure out a way to say something. So I just want to let everyone know that. I want to thank folks for coming. Sorry we ran uh, almost late, and uh, thank you.